On today's special episode of Homeworthy, our editors have rounded up some of our favorite homes inspired by European design. From oceanfront mansions in Newport, Rhode Island, to opulent apartments in New York City, it's a feast for the eyes. Enjoy! You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. This is a salon, which is the main room of the house. It's got a slight oval shape to it um, that I found more appealing and also gave us the opportunity to do some very important storage tricks that I can't wait to show you all. But first, I love the floor. I had no idea that we would be able to find and have that wonderful contractor pattern these floors after of course, French floors. It's wormy chestnut that we found on the internet and had the boards planed and he created this beautiful, it's a sort of a parquet de Versailles, but a small version that's in scale more with our lifestyle and this room. But one thing I really love and I wanna point out to you all because I think it says, speaks so much to my lineage. My darling mother who's Southern, when we were building the house and she was so excited, she said, darling, is there anything from my house that you would like? And I paused because she has a very beautiful home in Atlanta. And I said, well, mother, I, I wouldn't think of taking anything. She said, no, I want to see you enjoying it while I'm still alive, not after I'm gone. So we built the room in honor of my mother with that gorgeous 18th century giltwood mirror that she let me take out of her dining room. And I said something to her, she was so funny. I said, well, but mother, that's in your dining room, don't you? And she said, oh heck, I'll just get the other one in the bedroom and put it over there. <laughs> so anyway, her spirit is in this house. And as we go through it, I'll just point out one or two other things that, um, that she gave us. And I'm so glad she did because she lived at least 12 years after we built the house and moved in. This is another piece that, um, you know, antique that we discovered and what I love so much about it is the sexy curve of the metal from the pedestal that it's sitting on. And then we had a wooden top done and then faux painted to look like marble. But when you enter from the front door, this is the first thing you see. And of course it goes with the oval of this particular room. And I also have claws that can cover it, um, but I just think that it deserves to have those legs being shown off like that. And then um, I have a thing about consoles. So I found this in uh, Christie's catalog, a pair of them on either side, gilt wood. They're not French, they're Italian, but I think they go very well. And the beautiful rose, deep rose fireplace that we found at an antique shop in Maine. Of course, the fun of building his house is the treasures that you find and the story that went with each treasure. Oh, the trek up to Maine or this and that. And then, you know, the husband saying, are we ever gonna get there? And finally we got there. But here again, it fits so beautifully to the scale of this room. And I have to say, I have to point out that I'm all about flowers and I love the opportunity today to dream about some of the things I've always wanted to do, but this was an opportunity to do it. So one of them, for instance, are um, special topiaries that were done just for you all um, with Clematis scaling up them in um, an old, old, old terracotta pot. And I think they just bring the garden indoors and still look very dressy. And also we're, our ceiling is about 10 and a half feet not too, too tall. And I love stacking. It's not a salon style. A salon style would have the whole wall covered, but at least the three gilt wood frames marching up that panel, draw your eye up and make you look at other details like the overdoors here, which I had said, we have some tongue in cheek. That's to me very tongue in cheek, a little something from a 18th century French house. Um, and then these are closets. One, two, and three. And do you want to know what's in the closets? Yes, I do. Well, let's go over. Let me show you. 
Now remember, I said I am very into entertaining. And one of the rules of entertaining is that if it's close at hand, you'll use it and it'll be a lot easier and you won't fuss about entertaining. So here you have the gold ballroom chairs that go at the tables when you're dining. They are stacked shaker style and I can get eight in each closet. So I've got 16, which does two tables, 54 inches. But the real fun, and here again, you'll see this wall is a little wider than a normal wall would be between rooms. And look what's in here. All of the rollout tables. So you must have some pretty incredible dinner parties. Oh, well, everybody in Newport does. But this just makes it easier. And we don't have a formal dining room. We just dine in every room in the house. We have Christmas Eve dinner here. We have Christmas Day lunch in front of the, oh, that's a secret. I will tell you about that later. Um, but anyway, I just think if it's, if it's here and you can put your hands on it, you'll use it. Another Italian piece in an otherwise French house. <clears throat> it's an 18th century giltwood settee, which, and I just love the curve of it. And it picks up that curve of the wall, which is part of what makes this, gives us a feeling of being um, an oval room. And this is fabric that I had forgotten that I had. It was in my mother's attic, and she reminded me I had it since 1970. And it's a beautiful hand-printed Clarence house with a Chinese scene on it. And the colors, to me, are so magical. And the way they light up, and of course, you've got the window right there, so you're looking directly onto that pattern. And then there's a little tiny chaise here, little tiny chair that, well, actually, it's the foot, footstool to a, a chaise that has the same fabric on it. But you know, one thing we were so lucky about, when we built the house and started building in 1997, the contractor who had been in charge of Doris Duke's Newport Restoration Foundation was available. And here was a man who was only used to working on 18th century houses. And we very much wanted this to feel like an 18th century house on the interior. He understood exactly what he, we wanted and he rose to the challenge and he's still one of our best friends. Well, it's very French. A number of the touches are very tongue in cheek, not to be taken too seriously. It's on a scale that is, well, certainly for our lifestyle, not, you know, 20 foot ceilings as so many of the mansions in Newport. But everything from the beautiful wormy chestnut floor to the Honduran mahogany in the library, these were all the touches that just brought us such pleasure each day. All of the room openings are very large. So you flow, I'll never forget my mother. I grew up in Beverly Hills, California, and we had a Mediterranean house. And she said, this house does not flow. And I've always taken that as a measure. So I knew when we built this home that we would be sure that you could easily move from one room into the next. And yet the rooms aren't so large or the opening so big that you feel put off by it. And this is the Parquet de Versailles, but then we took it and flowed, here again the word flow, right into the sunroom. And you can see it's a totally different pattern with almost pie wedges, and then centered with the uh, leopard print round table, skirted. I just love, I think it's such a soft, soft, soft feeling to walk into a room. And of course, that's one of the tables that I can use for dining, for one group of eight, or I can go in here and get another one. And this room can actually hold three 54 inch round tables. And then my love, my red, I have to have, I have to have a red. I have to have a room that has red in it. And I have these, uh, here again, Italian, in my French house, uh, Italian um, painted uh, chairs, four of them. But one thing in this room I'm looking at, and we just put this out, we just got the sofa in. Our apartment in New York in the 70s, no, not in the 70s, I'm sorry, in the 80s, um, had Fortuny pillows, and I have saved them, and I built this 
settee around this and the red chairs I had. So I always have a spot in one room of any house or apartment I've had that has red in it. And I'm so excited about way, the way this works. And I sort of call it my Deanna Vreeland room because she, you know, she loved leopard and she loved red. Talk about serendipity. We are, we only lived at the time about half a mile from here. So it was very easy to come over every day. And I was here on the job all day long. Um, and I came in a little early one day and they were finishing, um, you know, the wall board and everything. And I walked in and I looked up and I saw this interesting, gorgeous shape. And I turned to the uh, carpenter and I said, Louie, I said, what is this? And he said, oh, don't worry, Mrs. Pardee, we're, we're going to be uh, boarding over it. And I said, no, no, you're not going to, we're going to keep this. So we took the painting that had been done on the walls and we continued it up into that. But come and stand underneath it. You feel like you're underneath a Chinese umbrella. And very importantly, I'm standing right here and this is where the Christmas tree goes. And it can be 11 feet. They're hard to find, but anyway. So at Christmas time, this is a Christmas tree. And if I hadn't gotten over there early that morning, that would have been gone. If you had to ask me my favorite room in this house, I would say it's this room because of the paintwork. And at the time we were building, there was a wonderful book out called The Swedish Room. And this is where I was inspired to have the painters do this hand-painted work on all of the walls, as you can see. And one thing right here, they also touched it with a little bit of gold. So at night, when the candles are on, this glimmers a little tiny bit. But I love color. And here again, back to the red. I love, this is my favorite vignette. Come here, and you just have to get this right here. The two chairs centered on the panel and with that sconce above. Well, of course, that's Augustus Caesar dressed to go out in Newport. <laughs> I always have to have a little bit of wit in each room, something that draws a question like your question. Um, and actually the rest of the fascinator came out or dropped off after I was getting out of the car to go to a party. So um, I haven't glued it back on, but I think it suits him very well. And at Christmas time, we put, we put ropes of, Christmas balls around him, and then we can drape him with fabric, and oh, we have a lot of fun with Caesar. This is our foyer. It's pretty small, as you can see, so it was a little bit of a design challenge at first. I didn't have any furniture in here, and it felt like it was huge and kind of empty. Um, so I found this tiny little table and then had this um, skirt made. Uh, out of this really fun pattern. And so I keep a lot of cute little tchotchkes here, all of my little animals that greet people when they come in. So this was a wedding gift, actually. It's a silver ice bucket, um, but I obviously don't use it as an ice bucket. I just thought it was so pretty. I wanted to have it out all the time. So I use it as a vase for these dried flowers. Okay, so from the entry, we're gonna go into the living room. So we can come down here, down a few steps um, into our large sunken living room, which is where uh, we entertain people and um, host dinner parties. Uh, we actually bought this apartment a year and a half ago during COVID, right in the middle of everything, and we couldn't get to New York. So we actually bought this site unseen, um, which is pretty crazy, but I had a few details that I knew I wanted um, that you can kind of see when you're in here pretty well. Uh, a fireplace was like number one. We had to have, we had to have a working fireplace. We use it all the time. We're coming from uh, Charlottesville, Virginia and DC before that, and both homes have had fireplaces and we loved them, so we needed that. Um, the windows were a big deciding factor for us. Um, I, as an architect, love casement windows. I wanted them to be able to swing out and just, um, you know, let the breeze in, and they're also just beautiful. and. I love the black detailing, so I knew I wanted those as well. Here, the tram goes by like a million times a day. Uh, the Roosevelt Island tram, the cats love it, and it feels like it's out of a Wes Anderson movie. It's super cute. These are great uh, prints that I actually bought for like $5 a piece. 
Uh, they're prints of Scottish castles and ruins and stuff. But the funny thing about these is I wanted to frame them really cheaply. And this was back when I didn't really want to spend a whole lot of money on things. So I actually got all of the component parts to the frames and I hand framed them. And this is like half my collection. I think I have 50 of them. I have a bunch in another house. My fingers were like raw by the time I was done putting all these together. But I think they have a really nice impact when uh, framed sort of like this. Uh, and, I, and I have a bunch throughout the apartment. Um, and then this pretty painting kind of grounds it. I don't actually know if the painter is, in fact, uh, William Morris Hunt, who was Richard Morris Hunt's older brother. The, uh, he was the famous uh, Gilded Age architect, but I liked her anyway because she kind of reminds me of me and my sisters and our love of animals. So over here, uh, you can see uh, one of our sofas. I had two of these custom made for the space um, in this pretty velvet color, uh, green. And I actually thought when I got them that our cats wouldn't scratch them because they didn't really like velvet. Well, I learned that they actually do like to scratch velvet. So unfortunately, there's some holes. Please don't look. <laughs> um, but uh, other than that, I you know sort of added a lot of other green into the room aside from this kind of avocado-y army green, which you'll see throughout the apartment I really like and use a lot. So I love all colors of green and try to mix them as much as possible. Um, I also brought in a lot of malachite uh, color as well, just kind of inspired from some little things. Um, so this is an Anton Henning uh, lithograph. This is like one of my favorite things. I love this linen press so much. Um, it's a 19th century English linen press with this beautiful inlay. It's in kind of rough condition and the doors don't close perfectly, but it houses all of my like purses and also my uh, sewing machine. And it's just like, it's very functional, but also really beautiful. Um, and Winslow likes to jump up at the top and like terrify people when I'm on Zoom meetings too, which is kind of funny. <laughs> Over here, we have our fireplace with the original um, uh, mantle from 1927. And like I said, we use this fireplace all the time. Uh, it's super cozy and I have these little, um, they're called shin toaster chairs. So these also are custom and they match um, the sofas in the same uh, velvety fabric. You pull up a shin toaster um, to the fireplace to like toast your shins. <laughs> so they're very low to the ground and they're really hard to find. Over here, I've got a lot of kind of fun little things uh, that I've picked up over the years. This is one of my favorites. Uh, it's actually a slide, an old art history slide um, from I think the 20s or so, and it's made out of glass. Um, but they're just really fun and kind of ethereal. So this is a 18th century French mirror with an egg and dart detail. Um, and I actually got this one off of Cherish. And they, you know, delivered it in this huge box. And I had three people from the building come and help me hang this because I couldn't, we, my husband and I couldn't figure out how to do it. We were like so terrified. It was just gonna come crashing down. So we have a very nice handyman to help us. So this gate leg table, I, I rearrange the furniture in here a lot. And so during the winter months, I have the table in the middle of the room near the fireplace and you can have dinner parties here and it, it's really nice. And I knew I wanted something that had a sort of a pretty bottom to it because you'd see it when you come right in the room. Um, so this is, it's a gate leg table. The leaves fold down so that when in the summer I put the sofas in the center and move the table out, the table then sort of acts more as a console table. I, I also painted this table um, it was, it had a black bottom, but it was uh, really in rough shape on the top. Um, and I got a few quotes from people who could restore it, but it wasn't really worth a whole lot to begin with, even though it is old. Um, so I decided to paint it myself in my parents' garage, um, which is, was somewhat successful, I think. Uh, and I wanted it to go with these chairs too that I had found. Um, these are sort of Klismos style chairs with this uh, sort of swooping back. And I, I actually also recovered these myself. I just took the bottom out and thank you, Winslow, are you gonna show? <laughs> um, and then I made these little cushions because I feel like it gives it a little bit of extra elegance. And I, and I uh, 
put down feathers in these and so it's very it's very plush but obviously Winslow likes it too okay I'll leave this there for you <laughs> oh we have this fun little ram I have like a that I probably actually have over a thousand animals in this apartment in terms of just depictions of animals or sculptures or whatever I've got this guy I've got like a little leather pig ottoman over here we have elephants birds you name it we have we have it in this apartment i love these curtains so much my mother-in-law who's actually an interior decorator helped me pick the fabric out for these and she actually helped me with a lot of the selections in the apartment um, from fabrics to sourcing furniture and and everything and i really loved these because i wanted uh, a sort of horizontal element to go with this such a vertical space um, and again sort of the play on the vertical and horizontal that you see in the muntins and mullions in the windows and so I thought this was a really nice compliment and the fact that it's slightly uh, transparent as well is um, I think very elegant and sort of tailored. <music> So now we're going to go into the library, um, which we also sometimes call the green room, but I feel like that's a little misleading <laughs> because we don't do any filming in here, but it is very green. Um, this is where we obviously keep all of our books and then we have our TV. Um, so it serves both as a really great place in the morning and in the evenings if you want to read a book or have a coffee in here or um, watch a movie. So we, we love this cozy little space. All of our books are obviously here. These are kind of funny because I really wanted built-in bookshelves but I did not want to spend a whole lot on them. So these are actually Ikea and we just painted them to match the walls so they kind of feel like they blend into the background a little bit. This is actually, um, I think it's a George Smith sofa, uh, a leather sofa that was from my in-laws. Um, and we brought this to every house that we've been in and Harvey, our dog, um, he uses it as his bed. <laughs> So you'll come in here in the middle of the night and he'll be on the sofa. So we knew we had to bring it even though it was kind of a tight fit and I would have probably rather had something a little smaller in here. We knew we had to bring Harvey's bed or he would be very unhappy. Um, and the pillows, um, I got all of these done uh, in different greens and blues to, to go with the sort of whole theme of the room, which was actually based off of this little um these little uh rose mauled norwegian boxes i have uh, some norwegian heritage on my father's side uh through my grandmother and he has this beautiful trunk um, that i've always loved that is painted just like this um, it's green and has sort of red detailing and so i've you know bought a few of these over the years and this one actually inspired the colors in this room with that sort of chartreuse and then this beautiful green this called cat's eye green benjamin moore love love this color um and that actually also inspired me to paint these beams i hand painted them last summer pretty soon after we moved in just like for a fun weekend activity and they're still sort of in progress they're not quite perfect yet and haven't got the perfect mix of colors or design yet but they're also kind of inspired by that uh, Norwegian sort of traditional painting. When we moved in we noticed that there used to be doors here but I don't know how anybody ever lived here because the door swing would get in the way of everything. So we ended up um, actually doing interior curtains that function as doors. So when someone's in here watching a movie or whatever, you can close them. I have multiple skirted tables in the apartment, actually. This one I really love um, is a pretty blue color, but I like them because they're very crisp and elegant and uh, they just seem to be a little bit less messy and a little less busy than um, than a typical pedestal or something with legs. When I was looking for apartments, one of the things I loved was kind of all of the ornate features and Parisian style details that you would find in the apartments in Brooklyn. But when I was narrowing down my search to the Upper East Side, which is where I lived when I lived in the city about eight years ago, I just wasn't seeing any of that, especially within my budget. And so I kind of took the initiative to bring in some elements like a couple of fake marble fireplaces. Yes, I have more than one and some fake molding and just really adding kind of some life and fun architectural elements in terms of just the textural details I have, artwork and just little accessories to kind of bring a Parisian chic feel into New York. In this apartment, I really wanted to embrace all the natural light that I have. And so I didn't want it to be too cluttered or busy, but I also definitely am not a minimalist and I love 
having collections and color and art. And so I did a neutral sofa, but I kind of worked color in through all of my accessories. And I always love a jute rug. I think a jute rug looks good in any style of room, whether your style is grand millennial or boho or Scandinavian, you know, it really just works in any space. And you can always layer a smaller area rug over a jute. So that's kind of a good way to add color. But I have so much fun going to different flea markets around the city every weekend and vintage stores and just kind of adding things. So truly, I would say that my style changes all the time. I mean, if you come back in a month, this room could look very different. So this fireplace actually comes apart into different pieces. And so the top is a piece, the front face is a piece, the insert is a piece, the bottom, the back. And so it was delivered to a stone worker. He came with his team and assembled it here and it took probably just a couple hours. And it's great, it is definitely not gonna fall over. It is very sturdy on the wall, which is good. It makes me nervous, you know, otherwise. So this was a little writing desk that I actually got when I was living in DC. Um, I got it from Facebook Marketplace. I think it was about 100 or $150, so a great deal. And the person selling it told me they actually had gotten it from a former ambassador's estate sale. How cool is that? I am obsessed with Facebook Marketplace. I check the app all the time. This chair was one of my Facebook finds and it was only $100. It was new, the person selling it had recently reupholstered it and it was in storage. So it really hadn't been used. It was wonderful. I could not get it through my door because the door to my apartment, um, just to the building itself is very, very narrow. And thankfully our neighbors on the first floor, my super's apartment, um, they have a, a back porch door and we were able to get it through there. But all, you know, all in the name of an $100 chair. <laughs> so another piece I love is my coffee table with this glass top. It was only $50 from Housing Works. If you love to thrift and you're in Manhattan there and Brooklyn, there's so many Housing Works stores throughout the city. So I love having a table like this that, you know, was very affordable, but kind of looks antique and tells a cool story. I love collecting matchbooks from different restaurants. So I display them in this cute little shell bowl from a store in the West Village. I also love a little bit of animal print. So this is a bench that I also got on Facebook Marketplace. Same uh, with the tiger one, another Facebook find. And I just love the little pops that they add to a space. Um, my style definitely is classic, but leans a little bit eclectic. And I think the animal print is definitely an example of that. So believe it or not, this is a fake plant. I tried to keep a real tree alive in here. It was not an olive tree. Um, it was just a different tree and it did not live. So in came the olive tree. Um, people advised me against a real one. Real ones are really temperamental and being in the city too. It's kind of, you know, I'm out and about a lot during the day and I, I wanted something that would thrive even when I'm not home. So. That is this. Um, this plant pot is a favorite of mine. It's also a secondhand find. Um, a friend of mine found two of them on Facebook and she took one, I took the other. It is 200 pounds. It's probably the heaviest thing, well, other than the mantle that I own. And it came with me in my move. And so <laughs> here it is and I, I can't pick it up by myself. So it's probably always gonna live right there. So I love abstract art. Um, this piece is by an artist named Joan Sotero in Richmond, and it's from a store called Brick Alley Co., which is also based in Richmond. I love the different swirls and just kind of how all of the neutrals play together. I also love a good piece of oversized art, um, especially if it's a original. This one was a very affordable find, and I just love how it fills the whole area. I'd kind of toyed with a gallery wall in this space, but after a while I realized it just felt too busy and I love how kind of just calming this piece is to look at, especially if I'm sitting in this chair reading and kind of look up. So definitely a favorite. So as much as I love a neutral piece of art, I am not a neutral girl. I love a little pop of color. And I also love anything vintage Gucci or vintage designer. And this pillow is actually a vintage Gucci scarf that was made into a pillow. Um, I purchased it through a designer friend of mine who used this in a show house. And I just thought it was the coolest thing. And I love framing scarves. Um, I've definitely hung framed designer scarves in the past, but I just think this is so fun. And I love the pops of orange. It's kind of different and a little bit bold and risky. So these are just all of my pretty books. I read a lot, but those are not out. Those are, you know, well, actually when I read novels, I usually kind of donate them or give them to friends after, but the coffee table books I will keep forever and ever. Um, no, I can't pick a favorite. I, I love all of them. Um, I get so inspired by them, especially writing about design. It's so fun to kind of flip through a book and have it be a real life 
Pinterest for it in that way and just to kind of get different ideas about trends and styles. So I think styling a bookshelf is so much fun. I, I actually don't restyle mine very often because it does take a while to kind of get them right. And I also, I mean, the books are heavy and it just, my apartment is too small to kind of be like shifting the books all the time. But what I did was kind of tried to alternate horizontal and vertical stacks. Um, I wanted to kind of make this bookshelf look a little more full. Kind of in the past, I've done just stacks with two or three books, but again, I live in a small space. I have all these books, so they need to live somewhere. Um, and I kind of just went to town trying different color combinations. I have black and white up here. I have all of my colorful ones um, off to this side. A lot of the books I have are blue, so those kind of play nicely together. And then I like to add little storage boxes. These are just filled, you know, with little cards from friends or trinkets and things like that. So definitely a mix of aesthetic and practical over here. So I am such a big handwritten note girl and I save all of my handwritten notes from friends. So they all live in here. I also love Polaroids. This is from a holiday party that I had and we just took a bunch of Polaroids. And so I love to look back at them and keep them in here. Um, What's this? Oh, this is a postcard from Dowling's, the new restaurant at the Carlisle. I love to kind of just pick up little souvenirs like that when I'm out in the city. So then over here is the dining room. I like opened this uh, doorway up much larger than it was to begin with. And originally it was kind of a half octagon. So there were angles on the corners and I wanted to create this panoramic effect and I knew I wanted to do a mural wallpaper. So I rounded it out to create these curved walls uh, like a cyclorama. And then to accentuate that we did these oval steps in the ceiling. This chandelier is a magnificent piece of art by Eve Kaplan. It's gilded ceramic. And I love the fact that it has both electric lights as well as candles. So you can dine by candlelight. So this wallpaper mural is totally custom, collaborated with Degorne to create this. It's based on Sicily. I love how Sicily is such a melting pot and has such a rich history. So here you find a Baroque church, you know, it's kind of still in the countryside. You see Mount Vesuvius erupting in the background, but it's all done on this gilded paper. So the paint, the painted portion is matte, and then you have the gilding in the back. So at night, when the candlelight's on, it creates this 3D effect that just looks like you could stick your hand into the wallpaper. It greatly expands the size of the room, but it's just magnificent to look at. I would say my travels are definitely what's inspired me most. It sounds a little cliche, but it's true. I mean, I grew up in rural Georgia, so I didn't get to see a lot until I was older. And uh, once I started traveling, I started to see so much that was out there that I just had only read about. But you don't really realize how young America is. And then you go to Europe and you see these things you've been studying and you're like, wow, that's been there for 500 years and yet it looks so contemporary today. So those are the things I tried to pull from. What would be applicable today, but still have that provenance and a classical background to it. So this is in the library. Um, this is where I broke through and I put in these steel doors. I wanted to use clear glass so that you don't lose the light and the air. And that way you would have sound privacy if someone's in here watching TV. It's the only place for the TV in the whole house. But it also converts to a guest room. So that's why I have these beautiful drapery panels from Rosemary Hall Garden, ombre. And uh, you can close those and get that privacy that you need. In this room, if I had to pick my favorite thing, of course, it's this piece of artwork by Samuel Hatmaker, which is Dolly Parton rendered in Legos. Legos, when I was a kid, was the only thing I played with. So when I saw his work, which he does, uh, he's done a whole series of like powerful women or celebrities out of Legos. And of course I picked Dolly because I'm a Dolly freak. I've always loved Dolly, but I think it got heightened when I was in uh, my freshman year of college when I took a trip to Dollywood during Dolly days and she was actually there and she spoke to me twice while I was there and uh, so I just really fell in love with her but what I love about her is her her whole story and just her personality and the things that everybody loves about Dolly but 
I always kind of liken it a little to myself. It's like she always says that her look is a country girl's idea of glamour. And I think if you look at this apartment, it's a country boy's idea of glamour. So I kind of relate to her in that way. So here is the lovely cocoon-like space that is the entrance into my apartment. Now, I always tell people, you know, when you have a dark space, you should paint it dark. You should just go with it. You know, everybody has that knee-jerk reaction of, oh, I want to paint my dark space light. But honestly, if you want to create a little bit of a mood like I do, I love to take the opportunity to paint a dark space dark, make it high gloss. The sheen of the walls catches all the little embers of light that come through uh, across from the brighter living room. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful technique. So I made this room a little bit of a gingerbread decorative element room. I painted panel lines on the walls and people who know my work know that I love to do this detail. Um, it gives you a lovely contrast and it creates architecture where there is none. And one of the most fun little elements that I did was this little filigree across the top. Um, this is from a great company called Decorator Supply in Chicago. I love everything that they make. So you come in through the front door, you have this deep, dark, mysterious, beautiful space. And what that does is it just augments and characterizes the light and brightness of the living room next door. It's very successful. Come on through. See how gorgeous this is? So when you have a dark space and you walk into a light space, it just further augments just the, you know, the uplifting feeling that you get, especially in uh, saturated color spaces. So um, this is my living room. Uh, it's not a huge space, but it is really charming. Uh, and, you know, it just shows you then when you have a small space, you can actually, uh, if you work with scale, you can actually have multiple seating groupings. Uh, I love to always use my banquettes. Everybody knows me for my banquettes. <laughs> this one has a fabulous fringe trim. Uh, the color of the living room walls really takes uh, its precedent in uh, Dorothy Draper's mustard colored yellow banquettes that are so famous in the lobby of the Carlisle Hotel. Um, she has these wonderful mustard yellow banquettes that are really iconic and they really, uh, they contrast sharply with a beautiful black detailing. Uh, so that really was my starting point. But the best part of this living room is really the access to the terrace. You know, here's this gorgeous, wonderful outdoor space and you know having outdoor space really changes your your life in new york city um, and i took my cue from these gorgeous ironwood french doors these are all original and when i purchased the apartment believe it or not the windows were actually just a very banal uh aluminum white uh so i actually had my contractor apply moldings onto the windows can you believe it so these are actually the original aluminum windows I had him apply these little strips of mullions that make the windows feel like the French doors. And by painting the black, you cheat the eye into actually thinking you have an extension of that beautiful architectural detail. Uh, one of my favorite little corners in the room is this little sofa niche. And it's fun because what I did was I actually put this built-in mirror, very Plaza Athene, um, that reflects, uh, of course, my terrace across. So it almost feels like there's another window here. And it's a great trick. Using mirrors is sometimes the best strategy in interior design. Um, and one of, one of my best tricks in this apartment was really to put mirrors in these jams. Um, and one of the things that it does, it actually makes the French doors look like they, they go on forever into the, into the side wall, which is a great trick. You know, a lot of the things that uh, you see in my apartment are actually from the Paris flea market. Uh, upholstery I have all custom made, but uh, pieces like these dining chairs, I found these, actually they were, they were uh, painted in a bright fluorescent green at the Paris flea markets. And I have like, I think about 12 of them and they were very inexpensive. And I brought them back to New York and I had my, my refinisher do this beautiful gilding on them, almost as though I imagined they were like this originally. <laughs> Everyone that knows me uh, knows that I love uh, dramatic old master art. And uh, this is actually one of my favorite pieces uh, by the artist Gericault. He's a French artist and he used to do the study of human forms and he was he was, does beautiful oil paintings that have a wonderful uh, character about them. And so I use a lot of his, uh, his work in my interiors. I usually, uh, I email the museums that carry the, 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 the actual paintings and ask them to send me a high digital uh, image and I print them onto canvas, which gives you a really good, very dramatic, but also a very contemporary take on a traditional uh, theme. So I love spending time out here. I, I really have amassed a bunch of little uh, plants, so I've never been a very big green thumb 
But honestly, I'm surprised I've been able to keep everything alive. <laughs> and I love to buy all these wonderful little objects that I find like this. These were in Stamford, Connecticut. This little armillary sphere. Um, these little pots, you know, are fun. This was actually a little console table that I actually had in my bedroom in my old apartment. And I said, let's just try it outside. It looks rustic enough. Um, and then this great little mirror, which I love. And of course, the awning, you know, it's rain or shine in New York City. It rains, you know, one minute it's sunny and the next minute it's raining. So, so it was great to have uh, a lovely little terrace awning. <laughs> this was originally the primary bedroom of this apartment. But if you're like me, you spend most of your time at your desk working. So I turned this actually into my library only because this room has great exposure. It has another terrace off of this room. It's a little bit shallower, but it has those wonderful iron French doors. So I positioned my desk to face out towards those. And then this beautiful little urban oasis is how I, I describe it. I designed this uh, banquette seating area for a lot of my projects. And I love to sit here, you know, to work on my laptop computer. It's like being on a sofa, but you can do some work from it. Also, one of my greatest tricks in interior design is actually to make a uh, Persian carpet look like it's more antique than it actually is, is to actually put it on its backside. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to always go to these, these rug auctions and I would see the carpets all rolled backwards and I would always love the way the carpets looked on the back and in the front. So here you go. This is actually my, this is my carpet and look how, look at the difference. You know, this is what it is on the main side, but look how much more fine and antique it looks on the back side. So it's actually a great trick. <laughs> if you ever want to make something a little bit more subtle, if you have a Persian rug, that's the best way to do it. So I love my French doors the way that they are, and I didn't want to have any window treatments on them. But in the mornings when I have direct sunlight, I actually come here with this little piece of fabric, which I had my seamstress, um, you know, make out for me. And it's basically a Roman shed that's attached with a with a piece of velcro so when you have direct sunlight and you don't want to have a uh, a window treatment that's permanent but it's a great little trick so you use a little bit of velcro and voila this is my desk area and then i built these two cabinets very formally to sort of anchor the room i always wanted a red room for myself but red is actually a very tricky color it could be very severe it can be very hard you know to be in a red room all the time so i really wanted something that was friendly I had a little bit of personality and a little bit uplifting. So this color is actually more towards an orange. Uh, so I actually uh, mixed my own two colors. It's Fiery Opal and Dragon's Blood, which I mixed together. <laughs> These are my little sketches. Um, everyone that knows me on Instagram, it's Garrow K Designs. If you don't follow me, please follow me. Um, I always post these, these different options for all my projects and everybody loves to comment on them. So I usually do two or three layouts per room for all my, all my clients and projects. And then I always post those sketches online. It's always so much fun. And tell me about your pencil collection. Oh yes. The concept is that whenever you have an idea, you have to have a pencil nearby so that you can write down uh, your thoughts. And, and that happened mostly at my bedside. I keep my pencils by my bed. So at night when I'm like sleeping, have insomnia, I have an idea, I always write it down so that I, so that it lets, lets me get to sleep. <laughs> Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.